So those were great summaries that were presented and great information and great ideas for direction. So, so from my perspective, and I work for, for the uh, National Park Service, for the National Register of Historic Places and the National Historic Landmark Program. <coughs> both yeah. programs. I think it's critical to get one of those, get a designation, um, because as has been pointed out, that that is, uh, that is a means of, of getting some kinds of funding. It also is the stamp that this is a recognized historic site. It's the nation's standard for, uh, for establishing significance. So we have, of course, tons of sites out there that have never been designated, but it's um, definitely a good, a good way to go to start with a designation. And it's uh, usually national re national register designation may be a little quicker than the National Historic Landmark uh, Program, which is a bit stalled right now uh, and has been during this administration. But I think that National Historic Land Landmark designation should be the goal. And I think that the integrity and absolute history is there. So I would like to see that as a goal. Um, and um, we've talked about national monuments, so I just want to make sure that there's a clarification there. The national monument, we're not talking about a national historic monument. That's a different program that came from the Historic Sites Act. Just as was pointed out earlier, the National Register came from the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. And then the, uh, and the Monuments Act was, the, was actually the Antiquities Act Act of 1906, and that, as Mike pointed out, is, is a uh, presidential designation. Can one president designate another take away? <laughs> so, um, so I think that, uh, but that, but all of these are such worthy goals. But what has to be done first is to um, uh, determine what is significant and what. What are the boundaries of this historic site? So Ted and I have talked about this. We've talked with Scott Baxter, the archaeologist, who may have been on the tour. I don't know. But at any rate, he's done well, he, An archaeologist has done a lot of research up there. He, uh, he gave, I, I can hand this out in a few minutes, but he gave me a copy of the map, of a map, showing where he's done his investigations. And he kindly took the sites off because as uh, you know, as with uh, any other any archaeological site, we don't publicly broadcast their location. But what I have is a broad boundary of where he's done most of his investigation. That doesn't mean that's where all the archaeology is, but it's a starting point for um, uh, for, for um, significant sites. So, in, I think we should be thinking about the tunnels, the archaeology that's associated with them and then part of this route, because these are all viable candidates for historic designation, whether it be National Register, NHL, or, you know, the monument, I wanted to talk about that, because that's kind of a different, a different thing. Um, so I think I've said enough about it. If any questions, come, yes, ma'am. Could you um, maybe clarify for folks the difference between a single property and a district? Well, sure, and this is this is my colleague, Megan Springy, and, um, uh, Tell them your website. I mean, there's a great API website yeah. on, for uh, the Park Service. So if you go to the National Park Service and you look for telling all American stories, um, you'll find what I do every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's done a great job with the API uh, part of that website. So um, I think this is absolutely a historic district because it's such a rich collection of, of historic sites. So if we were just designating the tunnel, for example, that's one structure that could be uh, that could be designated. It's a, it's a thought, but there's so much more there that I I would think you know why stop with just a tunnel? That there should be a district of other resources um, like these associated um, archaeological sites, which and I'll pass this map around as you'll see here are really not that distant. They're there. It's not like these workers were hiking long distances to get to their work site. So we have the, the tunnels and the uh, and the, the remains, the archaeological sites at the camps, right in the same in the same vicinity. So I think that would be a, a great goal for an underrepresented communities grant. 
to do a survey and establish what the boundaries are and what the significance is. And that would be those, uh, that grant program is intended for getting underrepresented uh, properties associated with underrepresented communities listed in the National Register. So. Well, can I also um, mention that uh, in the state of California right now, they're working on the statewide Asian American context statement, um, which includes Chinese American history, so hopefully that should be out later on this year. But also that just got designated and placed on the National Register this year was the city of Los Angeles did um, multiple document form. documentation form um, for the city of LA's Asian American context statement, which also included Chinese Americans. So now that's on the register as of January, somehow during the shutdown, but we're not complaining. Um, and so, but I think for many of us in California and even in Los Angeles, are learning about things that are possible with the National Register and with our State Historic Preservation Office, um, our SHPO, in terms of, it doesn't have to be a singular site. It doesn't even have to be a contiguous district or a cluster of structures, but it actually can be um, non-contiguous. Well, I better explain that. And that, I, well, I think, yeah, if you can explain that yeah. as, as possibilities, since we've seen some of the maps, because they're very spread out, yeah. and what is possible um, since, and then in, in partnering in California with the California SHPO to see, because I think a lot of them, it's in, it's in California, correct me if I'm wrong, it crosses over to another, into Nevada? Some of it's in Nevada. So that, I mean, that's even some of the questions too, of like if it's on the register in one state or across state lines. So, so what uh, the, the state of California doing, is doing is going to be groundbreaking really with this context that they're developing for AAPI communities throughout the state, all sorts of resources. So they're coming up with the historical documentation that, that we started at the NHL program one copy I don't want to carry home with me. So if anyone uh, would like a copy of our of the AAPI theme study that we have done for the NHL program, I'd be happy to give you this, and we have a few more I can send out. So what um, what they're doing, and Annie Crane is leading this in California, is doing this, which is a nationwide study, on a statewide basis. So they'll have a context for evaluating um, historic properties throughout the state of California, just as Los Angeles did this very ground in Boston, did these studies for these individual cities. That's where we hope this takes our states and our cities across the nation, is developing these contexts. When I say context, it's the historical information you need. It's the background and the backdrop for evaluating historic properties. So uh, it's, it spares someone the, the research of going in depth to a certain, for example, railroad history. Uh, if there was a railroad context, and particularly even a Chinese railroad context that looked at the entire West, then we could have uh, standards for which sites related to that context may be eligible for the National Register or for NHL designation. Um, so um, as far as these, these multiple property uh, nominations like Los Angeles did, all of those, all of the sites that are named in there are not listed in the National Register. The next step is to do that, uh, that legwork that's needed to present a nomination to the State Historic Preservation Review Board when it comes to the National Park Service. So, but it does, it does consolidate that research that's necessary for background. But then, as Michelle pointed out, with archaeological sites, just to clarify district, as Megan also asked for a clarification there, if you have a cluster of archaeological sites, you don't have to nominate this one and this one and this one all separately, particularly if they're thematically linked, if they're all railroad camps, um, you draw a boundary and that would be an archaeological district. So I hope that's clear.